business tycoon Christo Visser says the noose is tightening in response to the first big move against ex-CEO of Steinhoff, Marcus Yester. Yesterday, the Reserve Bank began seizing assets belonging to Yester and his wife, or linked to his family trust or his company, Lanzarak Estate Investments. The assets include the couple's home in Hermanus, cars, jewellery and the historic Lanzarak wine farm. Now, the documents authorising the attachment show that he's suspected of having flouted exchange control regulations. Visser was the chairperson of Steinhoff when its shares dramatically crashed in December 2017 after a German investigation into financial irregularities. 200 billion rand was wiped off the JSE. Visser lost more than half of his wealth as a huge investor in Steinhoff. He has since regained his status as a dollar billionaire. And he joins us now. Mr. Visser, thank you uh, for your time. This isn't a fraud charge, uh, which, which many Many people like you who, who lost money, I think, have been waiting for. Uh, but how significant do you believe this Reserve Bank move is? I think it's very significant because the Reserve Bank uh, has enormous power and obviously has access to institutions, other banks, other central banks and other regulatory authorities to which uh, a normal claimant like myself uh, would not have access and therefore I believe it is a very, very important development. The and Lanzarek, one I'm yeah. sure that Mr. Eusta did not expect. Well, uh, some people say that he has been uh, out and about, uh, sort of not uh, suspecting anything will happen. This comes years later. Are you in touch with him at all? Do you know anybody who is, Mr. Visser? No, I haven't seen him or spoken to him since the 5th of December 2017. Lanzarak Wine Farm is among the assets attached. Now, that's important to you. You once all, uh, owned it and you, and you sold it to Yester. We'll, we'll talk about that um, and, and your claim in that regard. But do you believe it uh, will be kept in, in safe care? Yes, uh, you know, Eusta, through the action of the Reserve Bank, is now in a position where he cannot dissipate any assets. Uh, so in that sense, it is very important for me because I sued Eusta for the return of Landsrack already in 2018. And there was always the concern that he would try to hide it even further. Uh, he alleges that he is not the owner, but there is enough evidence to point out that he is, in fact, the owner. Yeah. He's a financial man. You're a financial man. Um, how much hiding do you think he mm. could have done over the, the years in which nothing has happened thus far? Well, you know, whatever he's done, he's obviously had five years to... Uh, to move things around and try to hide uh, ill-gotten assets. Um, so, so you said you believed that, that things could have been hidden. Um, uh, the, the, the charge here is that he may be guilty of exchange controls, uh, uh, exchange control yeah. abuse. Personally, I think, although a huge problem for him, I think that's the least of his problems. Lanzarek uh, was just the beginning for you. Um, as I understand it, that's how you got involved in Steinhoff. You, you swapped that's exactly right. for, for shares. Yeah, but then there, there, you, you got in deeper over time. You sold Pepcor um, and yeah. then you, you lent the money, uh, the company money, and then you became the, the chair. There have been questions, and, and we do have to put them to you again, Mr. Visa. Uh, what, was, what was the board doing? So you were the chairperson. A German, uh, German investigators were finding huge signs of, of fraud. Was the board completely in the dark for, for the more than a year that you were there? I'm happy that you asked the question, Francis, because I and many other people have gone on record dozens of times to explain that when the first allegations against Euster were made, the board of Steinhoff in December 2015, when I was not chairman, but I was a member of the board, we appointed one of the most prominent forensic investigating firms in Germany, a firm called FGS, with a mandate to investigate 
every allegation made by the Oldenburg prosecutor in Germany and to report back to the board. And until December 2017, these people who are highly respected and highly competent reported to the board and to me at that stage in my position as chairman that they found no truth in the allegations made against Euster. Yeah, and, and I understand that you're sympathetic to the South African authorities right now because it's uh, complex to unravel um, uh, something that took place over many years. Well, Francis, if you consider that the perpetrators of this fraud for a period of at least a decade managed to hide the fraud, from the internal auditors of the company, from the statutory auditors of the company, from the component auditors, from the regulators, from the ratings agencies, from the banks, from the institutions that lent Steinhoff tens of billions of rands. Yeah. Then one should have some idea of how cleverly this fraud was constructed. But Mr. And how Lisa, difficult. There, there, were, there were people who saw some signs. Um, you spoke to the makers of the Stein Heist documentary. So did uh, Craig Butter, a, a researcher, who says that he showed you some of those concerns about Steinhoff. I think before you even invested yeah. in, in the first place, why did you ignore yeah. those warnings? Well, let me tell you why. At the time that Butters had that discussion with me, Steinhoff already had a market capitalization of a hundred billion rand. So Butters is one individual who is an analyst. I had at least 20 analyst reports that said exactly the opposite, mm. that explained it all. I then went on the board, served on the board for three years, watched what Euster was doing checked what the procedures were that were followed, check who the gatekeepers were, and nothing showed, as I said to you earlier on. Yeah. After a, even a thorough forensic investigation came to the conclusion that nothing was wrong. But, but this was one single individual. Yeah. Very quickly, Mr. Visser, we're running out of time, and I'd love your um, opinion on this. Some conjecture that this is about an old boys club, uh, that business people get a blind spot when they're dealing with people who look like them, talk like them. There's a lot of trust involved and not enough questioning. Y your comments on that? Francis, the comment is a very simple one. One of our leading business people years ago said that obviously to trust someone, is a huge risk. Not to trust people in your business or businesses is a bigger risk. I was fortunate enough, together with thousands of colleagues, to build some of the biggest businesses in South Africa. It was all built on the basis of complete trust. Mm. All right, thank so, you. So, you know, whether somebody looks like you or talks like you, that, that's certainly not important. I have in my businesses people from all different walks of life. And we trust each other, and that's how we succeed in building businesses together. All right, we appreciate your you time. You then find an individual that comes along, and as I said, I'm not the only person he fooled. He fooled thousands of people around the world. Mm. All right, we'll follow uh, the Reserve Bank action and any action to follow. Thank you very much. That was Christo Visser, former chairperson of Steinhardt.